Excellency, we have the honor to address you in accordance with the humanitarian principles of Bushido, the code of the Japanese warrior. It will be recalled that some time ago, a note advising honorable surrender was sent to the commander-in-chief of your fighting forces. To this, no reply has, as yet, been received. Since our arrival in the Philippines with the Imperial Japanese Expeditionary Forces, already three months have elapsed during which, despite the effeat of your allies, Britain and the Netherlands East Indies, and in the face of innumerable difficulties, the American and Filipino forces under your command have fought with much gallantry. We are, however, now in a position to state that with men and supplies which surpass both numerically and qualitatively those under your leadership, we are entirely free either to attack and put to rout your forces or to wait for the inevitable starvation of your troops within the narrow confines of the Bataan Peninsula. Your Excellency must be well aware of the future prospects of the Filipino-American forces under your command. To waste the valuable lives of these men in an utterly meaningless and hopeless struggle would be directly opposed to the principles of humanity and furthermore, such a course would sully the honor of a fighting man. Your Excellency, you have already fought to the best of your ability. What dishonor is there in avoiding needless bloodshed? What disgrace is there in following the defenders of Hong Kong, Singapore, and the Netherlands East Indies in the acceptance of honorable defeat? Your Excellency, your duty has been performed. Accept our sincere advice and save the lives of those officers and men under your command. The international law will be strictly adhered to by the Imperial Japanese forces, and your excellency and those under your command will be treated accordingly. The joy and happiness of those whose lives will be saved and the delight and relief of their dear ones and families would be beyond the expression of words. We call upon you to reconsider this proposition with due thought. If a reply to this advisory note is not received from Your Excellency through a special messenger by noon of March 22, 1942, we shall consider ourselves at liberty to take any action whatsoever. Commanders in Chiefs of the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy. I have nothing further. Captain, I'd ask a question that I wanted to be sure about the answer to. He said that he understood that, uh, <coughs> that you said it was mutually understood that General King was surrendering his army. And you said yes. Yes, sir. Uh, was there ever any doubt in your mind when you left there that the, uh, that, uh, the Japanese had accepted the surrender? No doubt whatsoever, no. No sir. doubt whatsoever. We were taken immediately to Belanga and questioned on that same subject, so it was recognized. Major Tisdall, in order to clarify the location of your headquarters, I'd like to advise you that 157, kilometer 157, is on the Ammo River north of Cab Cabin. The Cab Cabin is at 161, and Little Baggio, or Base Hospital Number 1, at 168. Now, about where would your headquarters be? 169, sir. 169. Between there and the Maravillas Cup? Yes, sir. Is that correct? Uh, with respect to time, the witnesses have heretofore testified that the surrender, they had, units had been instructed to surrender as of about 4 a.m., 9 April, and that it was to be effective at 8 a.m., 9 April. Now, as I understand, your conference was during the mid-morning of 9 April, and uh, the General King asked for approximately midnight to go back and issue the instructions. Is there some discrepancy in days there? Uh, apparently so, sir. The, uh, you say that some other, in giving testimony, said, <coughs> said that? The witnesses have testified that the surrender at Maravillas Airfield started on the early morning of 9 April. That is possible because uh, during the time that we were waiting for the Japanese parliamentary to arrive. While we were at Cab Cabin, uh, the Japanese forces had continued to move 
south. And that was one of the reasons why General King made such a point of their halting at that time to allow forward units to be notified. They uh, were not halted. They continued to move south, and it is quite possible that they may have encountered uh, American troops around Cab Cabin who surrendered to them, knowing that the general had gone forward. <laughs>